All right, so here we go. Bluegrass brawl, almost street rhythm. She's coming in heated into the rollers. Oh! And we are underway. It's the final 20 laps. Who's going to be the champion here in the flat track edition? But we are underway. The guaranteed rate supercross. All oh, these guys he takes them up high. high. Let's get to it. It's the power dot hair scramble. Caleb Carter. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Hello everyone and welcome to the Sipes Pit Bike Championship here in rural Kentucky. We're just about an hour outside of Louisville as the crow flies. My name is Jimmy Coleman, I'm your host standing alongside the infamous Trevor Piranha. And uh, well, I called it the Sipes Pit Bike Championship. I understand you have a more colorful name for this event. Yeah, I figured being out here in Kentucky, Kentucky's known for bluegrass, right? I think we should call it the Bluegrass Brawl. More like a fight, right? I, I like it. I'm on board with that one here. So, pit bikes. You guys have a long history with pit bikes in the history of Nitro Circus. Talk about that and how much you guys love these things in your shows and what's gone on over the years. We've been on pit bikes as long as I can remember. We've used them in our live show. We race them at Trav's house. Any excuse we have to get out there and get on the pit bikes, uh, no matter what your skill level is. You can be a skateboarder, BMX rider, pro racer, freestyle guy. Once you get on the pit bikes, it's a pretty even playing field, and it's fairly safe all things considered, right? Okay, speaking of racing, this isn't the first time you guys have done this. You held an event earlier at Pastrana Land. Talk about that. Yeah, so we did uh, an event like this at Trav's house uh, a couple months ago. Huge success. We had uh, 12 teams or something like that. Kind of blew up, and pit bike races seem to be coming back on the, the rise of popularity, so we're just kind of riding that wave right now. Okay, so what are we looking at modification-wise here? These things stock, what's allowed, what can you and can't you do? All right, so when we did the race at Trav's house, we got all the bikes brand new from the dealership. No one got to touch them except for the day before the race. So here, we allowed the teams to take the bikes home. So we're not really sure what they've done to the bikes. We tried to ask them to keep them stock, but it's kind of on the honor system. So we could have some possible surprises out here is what you're saying. Uh, anything can happen in that department, man. Uh, you'll keep a close eye, and if you see a, a bigger guy like Trav pulling on somebody like Jared McNeil, like, there's going to be something fishy going on there. We'll have to see how it all plays out. Like we said, this was done once before at Pastrana Land. Right now, this one's going to be a little bit different because here we break it down into four separate races. But for more on that, who better to talk to than the creator and the guy who's hosting this event right here, Ryan Sipes, who happens to be down on the ground with the third member of our crew, Jared Taylor. JT, take it away. Thank you, Jimmy. I could not be more excited to be out here. We are on the beautiful property of Mr. Ryan Sipes. Ryan, you are the brains of this operation. There are four events. Please explain how this is going to go. Yeah, we couldn't just keep it to one. Uh, we got to have we got to have four, and we got to have the best of of the four. You got to have the best all around guy. So we have almost straight rhythm. It's almost straight. It has one turn in it, a couple more jumps, and then the finish. Uh, then we have flat track which I, I like to do flat track. That's one of the things I do. Um, then we have Supercross, which is basically straight rhythm plus a whole another couple lanes, a whole lap, should be about a minute lap time. And then we have the, the woods race, off-road GNCC type. Uh, it's gonna be like a two and a half, three minute lap time through the woods. There's some, some case breakers out there. It's gonna be, uh, we saved that one for last. We're probably gonna break a lot of bikes, but it's gonna be a blast at the same time. So no one rider has a specific advantage here because you have kind of just laid it all out. That's the thing, if you're great at Supercross, but you suck in the woods, you're not gonna win. You gotta be just pretty good at everything. I mean, I think one guy could win and not win one single event and win the whole thing. I have to say, Ryan, I am super excited to see a straight rhythm with 110cc pit bikes because I don't think this has ever been done. Yeah, we didn't think so either. That's why we did it. And um, it's been really tricky to build a straight rhythm for pit bikes because you just don't have the power that you have for a, on a big bike. So you have to build it kind of different um, to, to be able to keep your speed and hopefully have some different line choices like in the real straight rhythm where, you know, you got this guy on one rhythm and this guy on another rhythm. Hopefully it'll look really cool and they'll end up, you know, really close at the end. I am super stoked for this. Thanks for explaining everything, Ryan. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, JT. Well, Trevor, uh, we got eight teams that are going to be vying for this championship out here this weekend. Break it down for us. Talk about who's in the mix. All right, we got a lot to talk about when it comes to teams. I think the easiest way to go about this is let's talk about the two teams that haven't changed. Dusty Weigel and Troy Smalls on Team Index Thermoplastic haven't changed. Uh, AJ Cantazaro and Rod Bell on Via University, different sponsors, same team, haven't changed. Everything else has changed. So you got Trav and Sipes, the two kind of masterminds behind this event. They were a pair racing for Team Red Bull. Trav dropped Sipes, said, I don't even want you on my team anymore. Get out of here. 
So he's racing with Smagical on Team EVS Wienerschnitzel, so that Sipes has to pick up the pieces and put everything back together. He picks up Beerman, designs his whole track, decides, hey, I'm gonna try to take down the King, right? You got Greg Duffy on Team Pit Viper. Duffy had to find a new teammate, picks up Jared McNeil, little guy, freestyle athlete, and this is probably the first time Jared McNeil can actually put two feet on the ground while riding a motorcycle. Then you have Sipes' brother, Pooh Sipes, and Caleb Carter. He's another guy to watch out. Huge uh, potential there for TB parts. So then you have Team Guaranteed Rate with Travis Hardcastle, which is another local out here, Kentucky boy. And he's racing with uh, Wade Garrett, the best cooler in the business. And then you got uh, a last minute addition, uh, Team Earthworks with uh, Brett Loving and uh, Chance Raglan. I don't remember their names because they're so last minute, but hey man, I was making their jerseys last night in my hotel room. Hey, so question for you, with all these freestyle guys in the mix, what are the odds that we see some tricks out here on these pit bikes? Uh, Dusty Woggle, he'll probably throw a couple backflips in there. Uh, Travis, and then uh, Troy Smalls. And there's, there's two really good jumps out there for flipping. So we'll see if they bust it out in the middle of the race, see how it kind of hurts their performance or helps their performance. We'll see how it all unfolds. We have four different races out here this weekend, which means we have four different starts. You mentioned Travis Pastrana, which is fitting because right now he's going to break down the four different starts this weekend in the races with the guaranteed rate start. Thank you, Jimmy. I could not be more impressed by how well the Sipes brothers did in putting together this amazing facility. The starts, the first one on this guaranteed rate drop, and I tell you, there's nothing guaranteed about the almost straight rhythm. It is a six foot drop off the gate start on kids motorcycles trying to get off of the line right here. The second start is gonna be the lights for the flat track. That is gonna be a lot of fun. It's also going to be absolutely amazing. My favorite, the rubber band start, what we used to Pastrana land. If you go too early, you get whipped right off the motorcycle. I tell you, the one I'm least looking forward to with my ankles and knees has got to be the one that Sipes, being an athlete, has added to this, which is hair scrambles. You're going to have to run to the motorcycle, all the riders at the same time, and head out to the woods, which the course he designed and no one else allowed practice on. I'm calling cheating, but I designed my own course, cheated as much as I could and still couldn't win. Huge thanks to the Sipes family. Huge thanks to Guaranteed Rate for all the unique starts. I got to get geared up. This is going to be a blast. Back to you, Jimmy. All right, thanks, Travis. Well, we're getting down to the wire. We've got our first race coming up. It's the almost straight rhythm. Sounds like you're going in a straight line, but then it takes a turn. Break down the format. To simplify things, it's dirt bike drag racing. From the start, first one to the finish line wins. They're going to race against the clock to get uh, qualifying times, and then the fastest rider is going to go against the slowest rider in a single elimination. So the winner will move on. The loser gets dropped. Hey, guys. Travis John here. And I'm here riding kids toys on Team EVS Wiener Schnitzel with my man, Bill Smagical Smage. My partner's the legend, Travis Pastrana. When you got a teammate like that, you pretty much know you have to go, go all in. We both need a lot of pads, we've had a lot of injuries, and uh, we're both ready to, uh, to let it rip out there. So, uh, big wieners, little bikes, a lot of padding. We're going to need it, guys. Let's do this. All right, so here we go. Bluegrass Brawl, we are into the first matchup here in the quarterfinal round. Caleb Carter going up against Brett Loving. And well, Caleb, he was your best time coming into this thing out of time trials. He's on that inside left lane and he is out to an early lead here, Trevor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what you expect with your number one qualifier up against your last place qualifier. And he uh, Brett, pretty didn't even get uncontested to, the whole way through that. He didn't even get to finish that one out. So best time goes up against worst time. So you got one going against 16 right here in this quarterfinal round. And unfortunately there for Mr. Loving, this is going to be a one and done affair. This is yeah, your eight and nine time yeah, going head to head right uh, here. They're two formidable opponents against each other. I would I would have those two in contention to be on any of these podiums here today. All right, you got Weigel on the right on the outside. He had a little bit of a lead right there. Case just a bit. Now they're neck and neck here coming into these uphill rollers. Oh, and Weigel. It's oh, the front end up and no, did Duffy, Duffy kill the bike? He lost the chain. Duffy oh, lost the chain. That is unfortunate. I told you that could have gone either way. They were neck and neck. Dusty made a little mistake, started losing time, and Duffy lost the chain. So Duffy is, oh, Dusty trying to hang on. He almost lost it going through the whoops right there. Yeah, I think it's worth noting that these are both freestyle athletes with racing backgrounds. Not current racers, but. So it's McNeil you know coming it out hot with an early lead right there, but Berryman closes the gap right here. So this is this is a closely contested race right here. This might be the closest matchup we've seen so far, Piranha. Yeah. 
Barryman gonna get him up the, the step up. Oh, and he gets hung up. And push. Oh. Tries to take him high side on the inside hey, lane, but McNeil hey, taking it into the loops of the lead. It's gonna be close. Oh, yes. it's a photo finish. Who got that one, Piranha? I think McNeil had it by just a hair of a fender up front. We are down to the semifinals of our first race here, the almost street rhythm. We're gonna send it down trackside right now with JT. We are heading into the first semifinal, who is Travis Pastrana and Caleb Joe Dirk Carter. Caleb Carter has a huge weight advantage on Travis and also an equally skilled rider. So this is gonna be a very interesting race. All right, so here we go. Bluegrass Brawl, we are into the first matchup here in the final number one. Travis Pastrana out to an early lead, but hold the phone, everybody. Here's Caleb Carter. Caleb Carter, the light one. He's he's one to watch, but a small mistake sends Pastrana out to the front. Pastrana pulling away with it. The first time we've seen Caleb falter out here this and afternoon. You know it's serious when Pastrana doesn't throw the flip scrub. Wow. Just coming in heated into the rollers. Oh! oh. Caleb with a yard sale at the end right there. But he gets right back up, so there you go. That was a pretty good little tumble he took right there in that last whoop. Hey, it's a pit bike, but there's oh, not messing around. Yeah. They're going for it. Going into this, you were worried about the weight disadvantage, not to mention you were up against Caleb Carter, who has an impeccable skill in riding this track. What happened now? I, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. No way I should have been able to beat Carter, but he must have messed up, so I'll take that. And now I'm basically trying to convince Sipes uh, in here the final. I don't think we're, we're the two of the fastest guys, but uh, we definitely figure out a way to get it done. Uh, we were team Red Bull first round. If he doesn't backflip during the race, he's a sissy. So, you know, there's that going for him. Well, this final is definitely going to be interesting, and we can't wait. Back up to you, Jimmy. Sipes on Sipes. Moving up to the guaranteed rate start structure. Semi-final number two. Which one of the Sipes brothers is going up against Travis Pastrana? Down, no. We've had our first get off of the day. Yeah. He's Ryan. not going to be able to make that distance up. Just becoming completely detached from the bike. Yeah. So, barring any sort of a mechanical slip up or just mental error, who Sipes is moving on. So, Ooh. that is going to shape up our final bracket for almost straight rhythm. Travis Pastrana going up against Pooh Sipes. Who you went against your brother in the semifinals. He went down, you took the win. Now you're facing Travis Pastrana in the final. What do you think? Well, luckily, I think I got lane choice. Uh, I like the left side way better than the right, especially for the rhythm I'm doing. Um, I just go in hot, and I got the inside up there, and I know he's going to try something stupid, probably clean me out or just bonds out of the whoop. So we're just going to not look back and go as fast as we can. Well, this is going to be a final to remember. Back up to you guys. Thanks, JT. Well, Trev, we're now down to our final event. It's not the matchup that you initially wanted, but let's talk about what we're going to see here with Pooh Sipes and Travis Pastrana. Yeah, Pooh Sipes has been a competitor this whole time, and he has probably that little bit of track advantage as he was helping design this course last night as they are putting the final five jumps in, so it might have given him a little bit of edge over his brother. But the two tallest guys somehow made it into the final, like banging their knees on the handlebars. I think Trav's got that heart of a line, and he's going to win this one. We're about to find out. It's the Battle of the Giants here at the Bluegrass Brawl. Travis Pastrana's got the inside lane, and here we go, Travis. Looking like he had an early lead, but they're pretty matched up right here, Piranha. TP against Pooh. TP starts to pull a good lead. Pooh cases another jump, and this is going to be hard for him to make up. Flip scrub. Travis giving a little bit of time back. Oh, Pooh takes him on the inside. And TP Travis just back. squared that up. He wanted that to happen. Hold on. And he doesn't quite have it. Oh! Travis almost got him. Yeah, two or three more whoops. Travis set that up. He gave him the inside on that corner, I think, because he wanted to go neck and neck across the whoops with him. Good. You messed up. I was like, I got it. And it bogged on the landing. I and know. Then, I heard it. I landed here. My bike just died. Your bike died. My bike died up there. But I was like, I'm going to fly. I landed. I'm like, all right, he's going to try to take me out. And then you railed that so freaking fast. I was like, oh my god, he's gone. Good race, Steve. Good race. Uh, I tried to cheat the start, and then I almost got in the game. I know. <laughs> Doug Henry, Damn it! That was Put it in an envelope and overnight it because you sent it, Pooh. I can't believe you came back. What were you thinking going into that first turn? Oh, well, I mean, my bike died here, and I screwed up the rhythm. 
I'm like, hey, don't give up because he might slow up in the whoops or something. I wasn't thinking I would pass him up there. Uh, yeah, I just took him high on the berm and never looked back. I hit the whoops wide open. I know he was coming for me, but we came away with it. I'm pumped. After this loss, you have three more races that you need to make these points up for if you're taking the weekend. Yeah, um, I was a big disappointment for myself, for my teammate, uh, for my sponsors, Wiener, Wiener Schitzel and EBS. I, uh, I really let everyone down uh, by trying to show off just to, to rub it in that, that I was better. And uh, unfortunately, now I look like that guy. So we're trying to make it up. But I think all of us can agree at least the run looked good. Back up to you, Jimmy. Thanks, JT, and congratulations to Pooh Sipes taking the win. Well, Trev, let's take a look at the standings right now, see where we line up after our one event out of four. Yeah, so far we got Pooh Sipes number one, Travis Pastrana number two, and Ryan Sipes number three. And this is just the beginning of it. We got a lot more ahead, and uh, this could shake up and go any way you want. Well, one down, three to go. Before we get to racing again, let's take a look at one of the more colorful teams out here in the lineup, Team Index. I'm Dusty Weigel. Hi, I'm Troy Smalls. I am riding for Team Index Thermoplastics, and I am a professional stunt meet person for Nitro Circus. I'm a lumberjack and also ride some motorcycles here and there. I started riding pit bikes in the first pit bike craze back around 2004. My first bike was a pit bike. Got a Kawasaki 110 and uh, kept one in my garage ever since. My teammate's Troy Smalls. That's what everyone knows him by on the interwebs where he does super awesome tricks. I'm super pumped to be partners with Dusty ever since watching him when I was a kid at Nitro Circus. Troy's been putting in the practice and uh, I'm stoked to be on his team. My goal is to win. I want to beat the guys that made this track. If I'm not winning, then I'm probably going to fall back to be doing some tricks of some sort. I think the four different tracks is a cool idea. I'm kind of curious on what this woods loop is going to be. I know he's got something hidden in there that he knows about that nobody else knows about. This bluegrass brawl is going to be a wild event. My name is Greg Duffy. I'm a professional freestyle motocross rider from Graysonville, Maryland, and I will be riding for Team Pit Viper. My name is Jared McNeil. He's just talking to me first. You no, shut up. he told me to talk. You shut up. I'm originally from Australia, living in Southern California, and I ride freestyle motocross. I ride for the Nitro Circus. We're gonna get out there and we're gonna give him some hell. I tend to get a little close to other people. The other riders don't seem to agree with my techniques. So that's probably what I'm best known for. Yeah, I'm the best there is. That's all there is to it. He's slower than I am on a bike. Uh, he's probably gonna get worked, honestly. I mean, all them medals don't really count out here. Less bike skills than me, for sure. Prepare to get your feelings hurt. I think he's the weak link, but someone's gonna bring him through the race and that's gonna be me. Welcome back everyone to the Bluegrass Brawl. We are one race down and set to kick off our next event of the day, but I understand we have a special treat in the lineup. Now I've been around you guys at Nitro Circus for a couple of years and I know that you guys love surprises and what I'm hearing right now, celebrity race? This is gonna be a good one. We got Come Over Steve and Jim York and these two are the biggest entertainers we got on the course today. Well you guys are notorious for making it up as you go along, so here we go with a special event. This might be the matchup to watch, ladies and gentlemen. Come over Steve, which has been one of our ramp builders for a long time. Guy's great with uh, wood, steel, concrete. Um, doesn't spend much time on the bike. And then you have Jim York. That's our Pit Viper sunglasses rep. Some of the best uh, pit bike crashes we have are courtesy of Jim York. Here we go. He's been shopping at the bit all day. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Ooh, a little deep. That come over, not quite. Oh, it's crosses the lane, whiskey throttle, oh, Superman takes out another bike. Jim York rolling the track, might just take the victory. He just had to sack ride that out. Did he take out Travis's bike in the process? Technically come over across the center line, so I'm not sure. Jim York loops out over a table, uncontested. I think he's gonna run. Come over's back on course, come over faces into a table. I don't even know if he's still in the race technically. Jim I don't York even know. up to drag it back. Goes oh, for the flip. What? I'm still baffled by that backflip. I think did. Come over, Steve's going for it. Oh, yeah. no! Oh! oh Is there a chiropractor in the audience? Yeah, he's rubbed some dirt on it, Steve. Yeah, perhaps you had to attempt a flip in order to make it to the next round. That, that, oh, this oh, is going to get too really fast. brutal right here. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh! Come over, Steve just gets the award for wow. the best crash of the day. <laughs> Come over, come over. What happened on that backflip? It didn't work. It didn't work. And how about those whoops? 
How, yeah, that didn't work either. Those didn't work either. They're professional crashers, but never die. They don't ever get hurt. I don't know. He landed, no more landed right on his head both times, and he's fine. So he might feel it tomorrow, but that was more entertaining than any of our races. So a good way to end that one. We didn't die. Move on to flat track. I'm Ryan Sipes from Florida, Kentucky. I race a little bit of everything, motocross, supercross, GNCC, hard enduro, flat track, and I'm on Team Power Dot. My name's Tyler Behrman. I'm from Temecula, California, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to ride my motorcycle for a living, and uh, I'm riding for Team Power Dot this weekend. All modesty aside, I think I'm pretty good on a pit bike, and I, I think he's gonna be really good too. My original plan was the Pit Bike Olympics. It's four different events, and it's not just who's the best in one, it's who's the best in all of them. If you're great on Supercross, but you suck in the woods, then you're not winning. We're gonna have a blast, but there's that little bit of pressure because these tracks are pretty gnarly. I gotta be on my game and we gotta get there. And my teammates gotta get there too and that no pressure, bro, because our goal is to win. We didn't come here to do anything else. In the words of Tin Montana, bury me by the bonfire. Make me a lunch because I need a snack. We are about to start the flat track right now. This is going to be exhilarating. Nick Neal down in the first turn. That's going to cost him a race and cost him some points. Pretty well checked behind him. John on the inside pushes it wide. And Travis making contact, however. None of these riders are experienced flat trackers, so this is going to be a treat. And I got a little dizzy on lap like three, but uh, it was a good time. It was fun. Do you have any experience with flat trackers? No, this is actually my first time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm in second. Um, I'm in. Turns out I'm pretty good at it. The Maryland Wrecking Crew, one, two, my man. Well, it looks, traction oh, looks terrible out there. Oh, we got a total yard sale, some carnage, and Dusty killed the bike. Someone please buy Dusty Weigel a plane ticket to France because he's ready to whine. Dusty, what happened? I have, I have no idea what happened. I was in second place. I came around a corner, my bike was not running all of a sudden, and then I was in last place. I'm gonna have to go to the tape, I have no idea what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning into us now, I'd like to divert your attention over there. Come over, Steve is still disappointing his mother. I've never seen a more textbook style of someone who's getting coal for Christmas. underway with our second race of the day. It's Flat Track, presented by the Black Rifle Coffee Company. Piranha, break this thing down for us. Let's talk about the format. Yeah, so we had two heat races that fed into the semis, and the semis are taking us into the final. So that everyone qualified on the bikes that they brought, but they're gonna race the final on the Sunday's Flat Track bikes. So when we get down to the final, we're gonna have eight athletes in the mix. Who are some of your top favorites? Pick one, who do you like? 
I think uh, Duffy's looking really strong out there. He had two good starts, led two full races, uncontested. And after taking a last place in straight rhythm, I think he's got a lot to prove out there. So there you go. You heard it from the man. He's Cullen Duffy as a top pick. Right now, let's check in with JT, who's trackside. We are minutes away from the flat track main event. The riders have just finished their practice laps on the new Sunday bikes. Let's kick this thing off. Jimmy, we're out here looking at a 20 lap final, and there's no transfer positions this time around. This is for all the marbles. One man's taking home the checkered flag here. Now we send it down to the guaranteed rate traffic light start, and we are underway. It's the final 20 laps. Who's going to be the champion here in the flat track edition of the Bluegrass oh. Brawl? Looks like dead uh, bike. Cantazaro's got a dead bike there on turn number one. He's going to be going a lap down, maybe. He got right back into that in a hurry. It's the Sipes brothers out to the lead. Is that Rod Bell in third? That is Rod Bell in third. He's gone back to the uh, three-quarter face helmet. I don't know if he does it for speed or comfort, or maybe he's chewing some tobacco under there. You got a battle going for fourth right now between Tyler Barham and Caleb Carter, but it's the Sipes brothers out to the early lead here. It's the Sipes and it's Justin Rodbell. You're one, two, three as of right now. Caleb Carter. Now holds on to that num loan at number four position with Tyler Berriman in fifth. Let's not forget about AJ Cantazaro who ended up stalling out the bike. So it's Poosipes out to the lead. Brother Ryan trying to get some leverage there, maybe trying to pull an inside move. Remember, these two guys squared off against one another in our head-to-head -head brackets in the almost straight rhythm portion of the Bluegrass Brawl. I believe the flagger was just signaling five laps to go. Five to go, can Ryan make that move? No, he cannot. Boo is closing oh. the door, and he gets a little loose. That gives Rod Bell time to gain a little ground. He still sits in third. Our top three have not changed. Ryan's been chasing after his little brother all day today. However, look out, Caleb Carter in fourth. He's pulling up on Rod Bell, but that nice. white flag is out. We got one lap to go. There he is, he's gonna make the move. That doesn't get it done. So here in the Black Rifle Coffee Company flat track final, it's the Sipes brothers in the top two spots. It's Pooh taking the win, followed by Ryan, and Justin Rodbell rounds out the podium. Pooh, you now have two consecutive first place for the last two events. That's 32 points on the board. What is going on? Uh, it's awesome. I mean, you never know what to expect with this crew, but uh, you just got to go out and give it everything you got. And I came out lucky. I got to stay consistent for the rest of the rest of the events, and, and we'll be good. Thanks, Pooh. I wish you luck for the rest of the races. It will only get more competitive for these next two events. Thanks, JT and Pooh Sipes with yet another win and proving to be an unstoppable force out here, Piranha. After all, this is a points race. What does that do to our standings now after two events? So I think it's kind of expected. The two brothers that kind of crafted this whole thing are sitting one and two. You have Pooh Sipes one, Ryan Sipes sitting number two, Caleb Carter sitting three, AJ sitting fourth, and Rod Bell sitting fifth. We are just halfway through the mix. Up next, we've got the guaranteed rate Supercross. But before we get to it, let's meet another one of our teams, learn a little bit more about him. It's Team Via University. My name is AJ Catanzaro from Reston, Virginia. I race professional Supercross, and I'm riding for Via University. My name is Justin Rodbell. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Prince Frederick, Maryland, and I'm racing for Via University. I've never been to this property, but it's beautiful. A little bit out in the middle of nowhere, but that's perfect for a dirt bike track, and I'm excited to rip this thing up right behind you right now. I can't stop looking at it. I'm Justin Sipes uh, from Flaherty, Kentucky, and I'm riding for TB Parts. My name is Caleb Carter. I am from Leicester, North Carolina, and my profession is asphalt maintenance, and I'm riding with TB Parts this week. My riding style is a little bit cindy, but also a little bit cautious, and then uh, I really like to do whips and scrubs and all of it. I just enjoy riding. I don't know how to describe my riding style. I look pretty goofy on a pit bike because I'm so tall. I'm pretty calculated until, like if I go down and then I'm angry riding, there's not much calculation. I actually ride a lot faster that way, but usually it's really calculated. I don't try anything that 
I don't think I can do. Welcome back to the Bluegrass Brawl. We are halfway through in this four race format. Coming up next, we've got the Guaranteed Rate Supercross in Piranha. We've got a big expanse of real estate on that one. This is a much bigger course. Let's talk about what's gonna go down in the Supercross event. Yeah, so they're gonna use the full straight rhythm course and then they're gonna make a right just after the finish line of the straight rhythm and head back up the hill into the biggest jumps I've pretty much ever seen for a pit bike. Well, Piranha, you've got a couple of different ways to qualify into the final for this one. Yeah, so we have two heat races of eight riders each. Four will go on to the final, and then we have LCQ. We're going to take the top two to give them a last chance in. So you get a bonus shot if you don't make it out of your heat. Right now, let's get down to the track, and let's get to racing. All right, here we go, Piranha. you got Ricky stretching out the rubber band right there. That's a hell of a job he's doing there. Revving it up. Here we go. Five laps, top four, moving on, and we are underway. Heat number one here at the Guaranteed Rate Supercross, and somebody gets squarely right out of the gate. Did you see the recoil on the rubber band almost take out McNeil? That thing had some pop here. So again, out of the start, you come around. You're coming down the start structure, basically, from what we used in the almost straight rhythm portion earlier in the event. Take it out on this uphill run into the dragon back. They're going into the second turn now. Caleb Carter still ahead of Jared McNeil. They're hitting the whoops. This is going to be a technical section to see who actually is going to commit because a lot of riders are trying to save their bikes for the rest of these races. Pastrana and Pooh Sipes battling it out for fourth and fifth. Yeah, that fourth position, that is going to be key because that is the last transfer spot. Again, if you don't make it out of your opening heat, you still get a chance to go to the LCQ. You do have that kicker feature right there. You can use that little kicker ramp going into the last third of the course. But Caleb Carter still out there in that top spot right now, followed by Jared McNeil. As I've said before, he has picked the best line on this section of the track. You see how much he pulls away from the other riders every time they get to this part. Trying to try to make up some ground here. We are on the final lap. He wasn't the smoothest through that section, and uh, he's only got a couple more jumps to. Uh, oh, he goes up over the berm. He might have just taken himself out of contention for that uh, transfer spot now. Looks like he got tangled up with a box. Caleb Carter was out to an early lead and hangs on to it as the checkered comes out, and he will. Get across the finish line first. Followed by AJ Candizaro, McNeil throwing a heel clicker over the finish line, and Pooh Zipes will transfer to the main. Caleb, as always, everyone knows they have you to watch out for. Coming in as a reigning champion, what is your strategy for the main event? Oh, the track's super technical. Just got to get a good start and try to ride six laps without the big mistake that's going to get you past. I mean, that's basically what it comes down to for all of these guys, honestly. We've got one more semifinal to go here, then we'll get into the LCQ. So again, eight more riders, five laps, top four moving on. Here we go, Piranha. We are ready to roll. They got the rubber band stretched out. Who's going to get the whole shot here? It's heat number two for the Guaranteed Rate Supercross. That was interesting. If you watched Sipes' sight line on that, he was not watching the rubber band. He was actually watching Ricky's hands to try to get a jump on that start. And he's got second place where it looks like Greg Duffy got the whole shot on that one. Here we go, Ooh. coming into the uphill run from the almost street rhythm section of the course. Duffy and Sipes going neck and neck. Do you think Greg Duffy can hold this out for the rest of the race? Oh, well, he's already got passed back a second, but I'd watch out if I was Sipes because Duffy is known for the man with the takeout move. Let's see what he's got to the whoops. Duffy's still pressing the issue here on the downhill run. He's not going to give it up. I'm trying to take him on the outside as they move over the anthill. Oh, we got a stall right there on uh, 653. Oh, and Rodbell takes Duffy. Duffy on the inside. This is a battle. He's overtaking Duffy, though, so he's now in second place. So Duffy slides to third. White flag is out for Ryan Sipes, Justin Robbell, Greg Duffy, and Troy Smalls sitting in the uh, transfer positions right now. Well, again, the story here, you just want to be one of the top four. Hold on. Rodbell still 
charge and trying to take him on the inside. Coming into the end, he was oh, Rondo gonna oh, make a move. It's I know, and Sipes cuts him off for on That was a little sketchy through there. He held it together. That was, that was a bold move. Sipes heard him coming. He closed the door. He pinched him off, turning into that anthill. I think all these oh, guys he takes him up him high. high side. Oh, man, that was kind of a dirty move right there. I thought he was going to push Ryan off course right there. Yeah, it's just the a heat banners. race after all, but he wants the victory. So I the, almost called that correctly, Jimmy. I didn't expect that last corner to go that way. At the end, it's Justin Rodbell coming across the finish line first. Ryan Sipes settles for second, but hey, who cares? You're in the final. Ryan Sipes leading that whole heat right on the last lap, on the last turn. You take first. What happened out there? Oh, it's, it's pretty tiring out there. We're having a blast. But Ryan made a mistake, and this whole Honda got the job done. So <laughs> it was fun, and uh, yeah, I took the win. Well, this main event is going to be tough. Who are you gunning for? <sighs> Joe Dirt. <laughs> we know who's the fastest. But yeah, it'll be fun. Back up to you guys. We're getting the thumbs up. Mr. Melnick is stretching out the rubber band. Good form. Getting a forearm workout right there. Here we go, Piranha. It's go time. Three laps, top two moving on. Oh, and Ryder Bearman down. down. After all that, Bearman gets augered into the dirt right there. He is down. Is that Pastrana out there to the hole shot? I'll tell you, for a big guy, he's really got starts figured out on a 110. Pastrana and Weigel, your one-two as of right now. Remember, this one's only a three-lapper, and the top two get into that final. Well, Litz here right there in third, so potentially fighting for that position. Into the rhythm section here. We'll see if Weigel can close him off. I'll tell you, Pastrana, at his age, and the level of his body is just barely hanging together, proving he's still, he's still got a little fight left in him. Well, apparently, we've gone down to two laps because the white flag has already come out now. Yeah, look at that lead that he's got. Oh, Weigel had to pull up. Misses the corner. Weigel had to pull up. He missed the corner, so Velechka's in second right now. Remember, only the top two transfer. TP's got this one in the bag, barring any slip-ups. I didn't see where the pass happened, but Velechka went to third, so Hardcastle is looking at that last transfer. Thought, oh, no, did Travis kill the bike? What's going on? He's oh, Ricky no, bobbing no, it right no, now. No. He's running the bike. Oh, oh, oh no. no. So it's going to be Hardcastle and Valechka. I think maybe he lost the chain. And I said, oh, and Valechka decides to loop out, backflip it over the finish line. I jinxed him as soon as I said, this is Travis has got this in the bag, barring any incidents. And then it happens, the unthinkable. We had a mechanic on the last corner with Pastrana. His chain popped off. Me and Dusty about clipped over here over the hip jump, got together. I nipped his back tire, almost went off track, barely made it. Uh, last lap, me and my teammate off a guaranteed rate. Wade Blitz, he did a backflip. Then we went off this together. It's crazy. So two teammates advancing to the main event. All right, thanks, JT. Well, Piranha, that was some epic racing right there. We have our 10-man final set. Who are your standouts when we get into it? I think going into this final, uh, Ryan Sipes would be my pick. He looked great out there, and uh, after all, this is his event. When we come back, we're going to get right to it. It's the guaranteed rate Supercross final. I'm Wade Velichka, I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I'm on Team Guaranteed Rate. I'm a construction working, kids bike riding, motocross racing dude. Travis Hardcastle, 28 years old, from Brandenburg, Kentucky. Couldn't be more stoked to be here. What I do uh, Monday through Friday, nine to five, is train the Sipes boys, how to ride dirt bikes, just general skills, stuff like that. My goal for this race is probably take out Duffy. The goal is to win, dominate, not come to meet no friends or meet no people from Nitro Circus, really just win. The only one I've heard of is Ryan Sipes. Um, I know Pooh, don't know the rest of them, not worried about them. Just worried about my bike holding up because they go freaking fast. Travis Pastrana, you ever heard of him? Who? Welcome back, everyone. We're here in Kentucky for the Bluegrass Brawl, and we're about to kick off the Guaranteed Rate Supercross Final. Piranha, talk us through how this is going to work. Yeah, so we have a 10-man final, six laps, and uh, this is going to be a hell of a race because I don't think any of these guys are in quite enough shape to make six straight laps. Well, earlier you talked about some of your favorites. You now know how it works. Let's get down to the track, and let's crown a champion. 
So it's a very tight grouping. You've got Pooh Sipes, who's taking the wind in both flat track as well as almost straight rhythm. But as you mentioned, his brother sits just three points behind him, so it is still very much up for grabs. So here we go, the rubber band is stretched out. We're ready for the start. Who's gonna get the whole shot? Here we go, we are underway with the Supercross final presented by Guaranteed Rate. Duffy seems to be taking the whole shot. Justin Rodbell, hot on his heels. Joe Dirt right behind Justin. All right, so here we go into the uphill run. Oh, Duffy gets off rhythm, let's three people by. Jared McNeil getting a little loose, almost making some contact there with, I believe, Poo Sipes. So it's a tight grouping here as they work their way uphill, coming back into the downhill section of the almost straight rhythm portion of the course. Jimmy, let's just take a moment and appreciate the fact that we're watching Supercross racing on pit bikes. It is a spectacle to behold right now. I mean, this, I is, mean, a, this is a large course. There's no messing around here. It's large, it's steep, like it's, it's Supercross. Justin Rodbell in first, Caleb Carter in second, Pooh Sipes in third, and his brother Ryan hot on his heels in fourth. Here we go as you make the uphill run. He Caleb got off Carter. rhythm and just let it and let everybody by. Carter trying to make a move here. Justin and Caleb head to head, coming into the whoops. Caleb, Caleb on the outside, Justin taking it in. Justin still keeping first place. Who sipes in third? Oh, 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 Justin! Hitting Caleb with his back tire into the whoops. Justin on the inside, keeping Caleb shut out. This is neck and neck. Here we go. Neck and neck into the downhill run. Can Caleb Carter overtake him right here? And Jared McNeil in third. Oh, and it is. Rodbell goes down. So the yellow Whoa. flag comes out as Rodbell goes down. He got a little off rhythm, lost his feet, and then just pancaked on that tabletop. So now it's Carter, Jared McNeil, and Pooh Sipes here, one, two, three. Caleb Carter coming into the whoops, which he's been doing faster than almost everybody. Oh, Caleb's down, Caleb's down. Jared McNeil taking first place. Oh, this is gonna be a heated last lap. Pooh Sipes riding third. The white flag is out, so we are down to our final lap here. Can the Australian hang on here, Piranha? Caleb Carter's not giving up the fight, and oh, Jared's feet come off, and Carter takes the lead back. And Ryan passes Pooh. Oh, huge, huge comeback. He was so far back in that field, and now he passes his brother. We were just talking about the points gap. Hold on, it's not done yet. McNeil's putting up a fight here, coming into this handheld, but nope. Carter regains that momentum. The final straightaway, the checkered flag is out, and Caleb Carter gets it done. Jared McNeil finishes with a heel clicker right there, but. Caleb Carter, the little engine that could. Holy cow, you went down, but still pulled off the win. Me and Justin Rodwell, were, uh, we were battling hard for like the first three laps. Finally got the pass done. And then I think he made a mistake and went down in that rhythm. And the next thing I know, Jared McNeil was right on me and uh, almost went down the woods trying to send it a little bit too much. And, Luckily, I saved it. Don't know how I wrote out of that one, but uh, ended up getting him back after he made a mistake in the rhythm, and uh, that was finally the redemption I needed from the Pastrana Land race. Caleb, that was excellent racing, and that is 16 points that makes you incredibly competitive for the overall standings. Thanks, JT. What a great final. Well, Piranha, we're three events down. We've got one left to go, but let's talk about the tight grouping with the standings right now between our top three. Yeah, so Pooh Sipes is still sitting in first place, and then his brother Ryan is only one point behind him, and then Caleb Carter, one point behind him. So it all comes down to this last event, the Power Dot Hair Scramble, and how about the fatigue factor right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure these guys are beat up and probably have a little bit of arm pump going into this, and this is gonna be the longest race that they're doing at 20 minutes plus one. It's gonna be a tough one. That's a great segue right there because now we're gonna check in with this Power Dot Recovery Science moment. Thanks, guys. It's Dr. G. Today we're gonna talk about arm pump. Arm pump is an engorgement of blood in your forearms. 
So the reason why arm pump is so common in motocross, there's levers, brakes, clutch, throttle. Your muscles are doing a repetitive motion over and over and over again. That is causing flexion and extension or these muscles to be overworked. It gets so pumped up that it feels like it's gonna explode. Whether you're a beginner, whether you're the pro, whether you're the weekend warrior, everybody has to deal with arm pump, it's real. How is this system helping with your riding and recovery? I just got all kinds of arm pump uh, last moto, so about to go back out. Um, this should refresh my forearms for, uh, for a good day of riding. Power Dot is a muscle stimulator. You can power it all through an app on your phone. It's really good for us being athletes and putting wear and tear on our body to use these muscle stimulators and, and create blood flow and, and uh, keep us going. My name is Brett Loving. Uh, I own Earthworks, which is an excavation and track building company. I'm also an artist, and I'm out of Sag Harbor, New York. Chance Ragland, I'm from uh, Lakeside, Montana. I also do excavating, um, and I'm racing for Team Earthworks. I love that aspect, that there's gonna be multiple disciplines, four, uh, four different styles of racing. We have the almost straight rhythm, the flat track, the supercross, and the hair scramble. And I think that's gonna kind of play, it's gonna lend itself to a lot of different riders and different disciplines. So I'm looking forward to kind of being able to mix it up in different, different genres, if you will. To win out here, it's gonna take hitting all your marks, uh, making all the rhythms, try not to case or clip anything just be smooth. Been doing a lot of woods riding this year, so maybe the hair scramble will be in my favor a little bit. So they call it a hair scramble because everyone goes into the woods and first one to come out with the rabbit wins. Pretty simple rules. After you come through the rock garden, there's like a hill that I can't even climb up with my feet and we're on little kids bikes. This is going to be a pretty technical section. I am kind of prepared for it, but I think it's going to be pretty sweet. A lot of guys are going to get sideways through here. You've got the first stump, and then you go into these cross logs here. So this is pretty good for a hair scramble. It's going to be pretty sick. I'm, I'm excited to get out there in the mud. Turn three, coming right into a downhill, into like a weird like creek bed runoff full of sharp boulders. That's probably the gnarliest so far. I love it when they get worried. It's awesome. <laughs> it means I did a good job running it out. <laughs> There's some hidden gems under there, some huge rocks covered in moss, so it's going to be carnage and we'll see if our cases hold up. First hill is going to be a show. Yeah, done now. There's some rocks and sticks out there. We've been kicking them around, you know, trying to get good lines going, but you can't see anything with all these leaves here. Hey, I'm GoPro on you, GoPro on me, GoPro on them. Cool. You see the arrows in the middle, they're pointing straight. So the track goes straight, you just gotta figure out how to get there. This is another one of those sections that Dusty's gonna complain about because it's there's some case breakers and some endoers, but you'll see when we get down there. It just opens up, there's a bunch of lines for passing and figuring it out. Man, this is like totally wicked. You come into the woods and Ryan Sipes is like totally messed up in the head, man. It's like, it's like what bike? You don't even have one after this, man. It's like if you ride this, you're a real freaking man. We should go get the shovel and put a bit of dirt here. So we just come wide open and just go. Or if you're really good, like magical or something, you could probably like ride along this log. Ride the log all the way up here. Probably not, it's probably not a good idea. Dude, I have no idea where the track is. I kind of blacked out like as soon as we passed the tree line. <laughs> So, I mean, it's probably just going to be a free for all, which I'm pretty good at. We made an executive decision. I was going to call it for a vote, but they said it's not worth it. We're going over this log. It's mandatory. A little track change. It's going to be fun. Thanks for on 350s, I'm pretty sure. We're not. We're on little 110s. He's asking us to hurt the bikes. So we got a straight vertical drop right here. Um, one, two things I can't really do anymore on pit bikes. Big jumps and going down steep things. That's all there is here. <laughs> it was supposed to be Pooh's basement, I think. I don't know how he's gonna live in here after we tear it all up, but I think it's the basement. <laughs> right now it's the mud pit, and I'm sure there's some snakes underneath the mud. And it might snake us, so, uh, 
don't know what, what's going to happen here. If, the, if this doesn't work, we go outside and it seems like a cheater line, so we got to make this work. Hey, all right, this is the finish line. Obviously, the race is 20 plus one, so we're going to do it a whole bunch of times, but this will be the finish line. The best line is to jump just a little bit to the right, hip into it, and start your next lap. All right, I got a dollar. More bikes finish than DNF, but it's going to be very close. I'm definitely going the other way. OK. More right, bikes DNF than finish. We got a bet. Because what, it's going to be, it's 20 plus one, so probably like four laps-ish. Yeah, I'm probably going to lose that bet. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think about the 20 plus one. Yeah. Going yeah. around it once? OK, fine. Yeah. Going, Going around it yeah. four or five times? All right, good. 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 Yeah. Solid? Yeah, solid. They could do more than one lap? Wow. Is he ambitious? Welcome back to a very windy and chilly afternoon here in Kentucky. It is the Bluegrass Brawl at Well Piranha. We are down to our final event. It is the Power Dot Hair Scramble. And unlike anything else we've done at this event thus far, this one is completely different. Talk about what the hair scramble entangles. Yeah, so this is going to be all 16 riders on course at the same time. They're going to have a Le Mans style start where they have to run to their bikes, start them, and then they'll tear off into the woods. Now the conditions are not as groomed as anything else we've seen. There's trees down, there's rocks, there's uh, mud. like. Pretty rough, pretty technical, and this is going to be probably the most grueling race they have. Uh, 20 minutes plus one lap, and uh, it's going to be rough for them. Well, we've already talked about that fatigue factor. Who has the skill set to stand out in this type of race? Yeah, so a couple of your riders have trials backgrounds. Uh, Troy Smalls and Smagical, I think they're <laughs> pretty strong contenders. And then you have uh, Ryan Seitz, which is an ISDE champion. Um, they're probably going to be the three to watch out for today. Well, since this one's spread out and all over the map, we're going to be in different spots. So you're going down to the start finish. I'm heading into the woods. Let's get to it. It's the Power Dot Hair Scramble. Oh, geez. This could take longer than most of the race. Look, Smalls out to a commanding lead. Now everyone's got to remember where they parked their bike. Smalls gets a whole shot with his teammate close behind, and I believe Rod Bell's in the second position. Trying to find the line to not get in the ruts, and everyone just gets tangled up. Troy Smalls has pulled a massive lead in front of everyone else. I can't even see second place right now. Troy Smalls is killing the hair scramble. And Ryan Sipes rolling through. One of the guys we predicted, Caleb Carter in third place. It seems like this race is getting heated. Troy Smalls with a commanding lead. We're in a 20 minute plus one format. Sipes getting loose. Caleb Carter takes down the banner. And it's just carnage left and right there for Tyler. First it was the back wheel, then it was the front wheel trying to dig out of that. It's just super loose. There's so much mud down there. And with all these leaves, it's, just, it's hard to see what kind of terrain that you're dealing with. And here is Travis Pastrana, Dusty Weigel, both. Oh, we've got a, we've got a jam up right here. The check Joked. AJ Cat Zara could have pulled the position in over the rock, and he takes the whole shot out of everybody. We got Troy Smalls and Ryan Sipes battling for first place. Caleb Carter in fourth, but has taken the fall. Poo Sipes, Poo Sipes, this is your chance. Oh, Caleb recovering. Looks like we've had a position change, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan Sipes is now in first place. Now the white flag is out for your leader, Ryan Sipes. Now this could make up the difference in points over his little brother, Pooh. 
physical demands of this, I mean, this course is ridiculous. You've got so many different features to contend with. There are some massive rocks, not to mention on the far side of the course over there, you've got this super steep drop in, and you have to come up this hill on the other side, navigate through a couple of these different logs that you actually have to go over. There's no other way around it. You have to go over these logs, and at one point, there's a massive rock that we walked on the course and we were told that you can't go around that. It's mandatory that you have to ride over that. So it takes a lot out of you for 20 minutes plus a bonus lap. Ryan Sipes has pulled a huge lead out between him and second place. He's waited all weekend, ladies and gentlemen, to get a W at his own event. Troy Smalls, there he is, throwing the feet off for the fans. He doesn't even have a back fender left on his back. He's had a flat tire. Ryan, you just took first in the final event of the day. At the beginning of the race, Troy Smalls had a massive lead ahead of you. What happened out there? How'd you get around him? Oh, man, that was just chaos out there. The first, which is the way we planned it, the first hill we came to, just everybody getting stuck and going crazy, and I had no idea where I was at. I kept seeing guys way up ahead of me, and then I'd catch them and pass them, and, but then I passed some guys twice, and I'm like, all right, those are lappers. And then I thought Smalls, he was riding really good. I just had better lines. Like, my experience in the woods, I was able to see those little lines where you can straighten it out, and I actually caught him. I endoed on a log over there, <laughs> lost like 20 seconds and then caught him again and finally passed him. But he had a flat tire the entire race. So for him to even get second with a flat tire is unbelievable. It was nothing short of exciting. Now, Ryan, you've been on the leaderboard in almost all the events. Let's go up to Piranha and Jimmy and see who's taken home the cup. Thanks, JT, and congratulations to Ryan Sipes on that win here in the hair scramble. And talk about the battle between the brothers. I mean, coming into this, Pooh had been dominant. He was leading in points with three events. And then look at the turn of events that came out of this. Yeah, I think we kind of all expected them to be front runners here. And uh, to see Ryan be able to make up that one point difference over his brother in the last event, that gives him the overall. And I don't think he could be any happier with his performance today. Comes down to the last event, gets the win in the hair scramble and the overall right in your own backyard. Right now, let's send it down to the guaranteed rate podium for awards. Before we get to the overall championship, we have a couple special awards. The first award is brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee and is for the best crash. Would comb over Steve, please report to the podium for the best crash. The next award we have is for best overall team presented by Phillips Brothers Construction. Would TB Parts please report to the podium? <laughs> After four events, there can only be one guaranteed rate podium in first place. The man who made this all happen, Mr. Ryan Sipes. Ladies and gentlemen, your podium for the first annual Blue Grass Brawl! Yeah. Now, Ryan, you went into this with a lot of confidence and a lot of strategy. How did this perform for you? And a lot of stress. <laughs> Putting on a race is hard. Uh, and then also racing it. But, man, I just, everybody that helped out, thank you so, so much. Um, Everybody was coming by after work, all my buddies. Um, Phillips Brothers Construction brought all kinds of equipment. Equipment share helped. Um, everybody was just, it took a crew of like 75 people. No joke, um, to make this happen. And then all the riders. I know you guys are busy. I'm a rider too. I'm busy all the time. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Nitro Circus, everybody, this has been amazing. Well, we hope to see everybody out next year when we do this again at 2021's Bluegrass Brawl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that is a wrap here from the Bluegrass Brawl. Piranha, your final thoughts? I think uh, to have a quad athlon of motocross, if you will, on, on pit bikes and uh, a points championship, uh, it's a hell of an event, you know? I've had a blast. It's been a pleasure working with you out here. Thanks to all of our sponsors, as well as the Sipes family, for hosting this amazing event. On behalf of myself, Piranha, and JT, we thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.
What would the word for like a four part triathlon, a quadathlon? We're gonna send it down trackside right now with JT. Now, if you could pick anybody to go to head to head with, who would it be? Uh, shoot. I gotta say Travis, cause he ditched me. He was my teammate last time. And now he just picked somebody else. So I wanna beat him. Quadathlon? Quad that's quadrat, quadrilateral. Did you manage to get a Roadhouse reference in there during that breakdown as well? Is that what I heard? Yeah, Wade, Wade Garrett's out here, man. You wait till you see him. Now, he has gotten three completely different start lines. The Garrett... Semantics. Three, four, 69, who's counting? Wow, that was as sloppy as Tanya Harding's ice skating career. Put it in the mailbox and call FedEx because Ryan Sipes just overnighted that win. Did you notice in one of those dialogues, like I looked over, then you, I looked straight, and you looked over, and we were on this opposite cycle of looking at each other? Now, Dusty, I just had a chat with AJ Catanzaro, and he says he has about as much faith in you as he does in Ricky Martin's singing career in 2021. What do you have to say about that? I think this is all a battle that we're familiar with, and uh, we always want TP to beat Poop. Well, it could be a real mess on your hands. It's a battle of the Giants here at the Bluegrass Brawl. Sipes wins this. Which one? We'll find out. Who better pull it out right now? If he doesn't get it now, he's not getting it ever. He's going to regret it for the rest of his life. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a hell of a race. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So what do you do? Like, Daddy first Duff's first tired. Place, Daddy Duff's tired. Lucky well, you got that many words out of me right now. Just, <laughs> Tensions are high. Everyone looks ready. It's going to look like a middle school track meet. None of these athletes are really great runners. Most of them are broken and half put together with duct tape. Here we go. Oh, geez! Jared McNeil all tangled up in the trees right there. Can't get that bike out of the mud. I believe that's Brett Lovey that's tangled up. When Jared gets turned around, you're going the wrong way, Jared. Art Cast is coming through pretty clean. Again with the fanny pack, not entirely sure what they're keeping in those things. Maybe tools, maybe beers. Phil Smaggy still in the top six, not letting anyone pass him. Oh, we've got him down. Greg Duffy is down. Greg Duffy is down. The Maryland Wrecking Crew. Get him, Greg. Get him, Duff. Come on, let's go. The only rider to do a complete body front flip over the handlebars this whole weekend. Come over, how did that feel? Good. <laughs> For the almost straight rhythm, Mr. Pooh Sipes, report to the podium. You look amazing. <laughs> now, Pooh, you said that that flat track was your weakest event, but you took first in that. What, what went down there? Uh, I got the whole shot and just went real fast in circles. It worked out. I don't know. <laughs> well, you heard it here, folks. Take this advice for a lot of different things. It might work. <laughs> the third event, one of the more technical of all of them, was the Supercross. And we will give that to Joe Dirt himself. Mr. Caleb Carter. Now, Ryan, the first few laps of the hair scramble, you had Troy Smalls in the lead by a lot, and then you seemed to pull out the win. What happened there? And Smalls was flying, but I just had better lines. Like, if, if he was on my lines, I, d I doubt I would have caught him. But uh, thankfully, I had the better lines. The next award we have is for best overall team presented by Phillips Brothers Construction. Would TB Parts please report to the podium? <laughs> After four events, there can only be one guaranteed rate podium. In third place, we have Mr. Caleb Carter.
In second place, our hometown hero, Mr. Pooh Sipes. <laughs> and in first place, the man who made this all happen, Mr. Ryan Sipes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your podium for the first annual Blue Grass Brawl! Yeah!